Hello, everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of Connecting the One Crisis. My name is Joseph Luciano, alongside to our co host, Miss Karaoke Queen, Michelle Clark. How are you everyone. doing, Michelle? Hold on, I'm gonna doing. put you in oh. a second. Go ahead, talk to yourself, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Michelle Clark, a.k.a. Shelly Fresh, as Joe said, the karaoke queen. Um, <laughs> welcome, everyone, and we're going to have a great show tonight. That's awesome. And we got a host, another guest, I'm sorry, another guest from R&B Showcase Live. Please introduce Tim Marshall. Yes. How you doing, Tim? Hello, hello, Michelle. Joseph, and hello, yourself. Michelle. It's good to see both of you. It's been so long. It's been before since before COVID for Michelle oh uh, seeing you, uh, you know, especially in, in, in the studio during tapings. I've um, actually been doing some things at different studios, trying to keep things going during COVID. That's one of the struggles that we've had, one of the challenges that we've had, trying to keep things going, keep things rolling. But um, just to introduce myself to your to your audience, I host a show called the R&B Showcase radio show and television show which is on the Comcast Network in Philadelphia and also on the radio station, uh, 106.5 FM, a great station in Philadelphia. I encourage you, if you have not listened to the station, there's a lot of great programming on there for you to, to tune into. It's all um, a community station, so uh, and, and it was put together by community members um, to, for us to have an opportunity to tell our stories and for you Philadelphians and people in South Jersey and in the surrounding area to tell their stories, so... Uh, the R&B Showcase television show and the radio show are both dedicated to classic to contemporary rhythm and blues, Motown, pop and soul and jazz. And uh, we feature a lot of the um, legendary recording artists on our radio show and interview them on our television show, as well as we give an opportunity for a lot of the independent recording artists from our area a chance to get exposure um, in regards to you know getting their music played on the radio and performance experiences and a chance for them to, to shine and to tell their stories because they've had different challenges and struggles and things. And, and we try to give them that opportunity on the radio show and the television show. And I want to thank you, Michelle, and thank you, Joseph, for inviting me to come on your show. Yes, I'm looking sir. forward to, to talking with you today. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Um, to you. The topic on this, this segment is going to be shortcut to success. Ooh. <laughs> okay. And, um, you're going to like this one. Um, this question goes to you, Tim. Find someone you look, look up to. Okay. Well, shortcut to success is the topic. Um, there is none, as far as I'm concerned. There's no, really no, there's, 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 there's no easy way to do anything. I mean, if you really want to put, if you believe it, you can achieve it. You know, if you believe, if you want, if you want it, go for it. Never let anybody tell you you can't do something. Just like what we do. You know, when I first got into radio and broadcasting, I tried to get on those big stations in Philadelphia. And I was told by one uh, program director, you know, they got my tape and everything. They said, well, um, you sound like a radio announcer. I said, well, isn't that the job I'm going for? You know, but long story short, they didn't want me on their station. So you, you won't work for this radio station. I said, OK, well, that's, that didn't enough to motivate me, you know, motivating me to want to uh, to. Well, is that Martin? Yeah, hold on. We call Martin Lee. Welcome to the show. Hey, Martin. Hi. Uh, introduce yourselves, Martin. You okay? You okay, Martin? I'm sorry. So, you know, Joseph, oh, while be Martin is, is, is coming on, you know, uh, let your haters be the motivators. That's, that's, a, that's a phrase you hear all the time. And, and they they are my motivator. They they motivate me to want to do what it is that I do. So, you know, a big station didn't want to hire me. So, you know, I go work on these little small stations. I didn't end up getting hired at WIP in Philadelphia um, as, a, as a producer. And I had a chance to network and meet people. I worked at WAYV in Atlantic City. And I worked at a couple of other smaller independent stations. And I started doing this show called the R&B Showcase on different stations. And then I found out about the station 106.5. And I started doing it there since 2017, 2018. And it's a platform for us to continue to tell our stories in our way. 
And um, I wasn't the type of person who wanted to sit and read liner notes. As a radio host, I didn't want to just read liner notes and just give weather. I wanted to be able to tell the story. Um, when I had when I interview artists on my radio show or television show, I let them tell their stories. Because a lot of those pioneer recording artists from back in the day, the Drifters, the Temptations, the Delphonics, the, you know, we just did a show with the Delphonics and the Four Tops. And a lot of those artists are still performing today. Many people are not aware, so they still perform. But they face the challenges of having a lot of imposter groups going out there, stealing their name and stealing their legacy and trying to rewrite their stories. And uh, that's the thing we're, we're doing. We're part of the truth in music. We're part of, we, we try to um, help to maintain those legacies of those original artists on the original recordings who actually made the music. We just lost Charlie Thomas of the Drifters recently, who was, you know, some of I knew personally. And... Um, one of his challenges were there was like about a hundred different drifter groups out there um, trying to, you know, it was trying to stop him from working. They try to strip him from his name and that type of thing. There's a lot of other artists that will tell that same story, but it's working in the, in the industry with the, with radio and, and working with recording artists, especially the pioneer recording artists that kind of paved the way and opened up the doors for some of the new people to come walk, walk through. Um, they're facing those challenges, those things. So that's kind of what we try to do on our radio show. We try to let them come on and tell their story. Oh wow! Thank you, Tim Mars. Thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. Whoop! Thank you, Tim. Um, Michelle, you got a question on the first question? You know. Um, basically, I was kind of following um Maya Angelou's story and Oprah because they come from hum like really humble backgrounds, and they suffered a lot too during during those younger days. But they didn't let that um, bother them to push forward to success. And I kind of feel like that, like, um, wow, I had a lot of things that could have, like, derailed me from what I'm doing. Like, I like writing and and thanks to Philly Cam, I like being a camera person and, and things. And what really pushes me is that I, I have a natural curiosity about things. And once I get an idea about how to go about it, I go for it. Like once I started at Philly Cam, I just, wow. It, it was like, at first I was like, oh boy, here I go. I'm going to join something and probably quit in a week, you know. But once I got in there, there was so much to explore. And I didn't know how far it would take me. Like, okay, I made a movie. Didn't know what to do. But I made it. And it, it's out there. Philly can't put it on TV. And I, I was like, I'm on TV. Like, wow. And then to work on the production and to see it on TV and see your name going up in the cast credits. And I'm like, I did that? Mm -hmm. It's like, Every day is a new um, experience and, you know, I, I feel like really charged by seeing that. Not, not, not an eagle trip, but, <laughs> you know, it's like it just makes me um, motivated to go further. Like, I know you want me to direct someday. I don't think I'm ready yet, but one day I'm going to get there. You know, I'm still working on it. And maybe at the bottom right now, but still, the challenges are, um, are motivational. You keep on going, keep on learning. Learning never stops. So, hey, I'm ready. <laughs> and I think about like some of like the people I mentioned, Maya Angelou, and how they start had humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. They didn't really know that they were going to go into the things that they did. And then somehow the opportunity came to them and they're like, this could be something. Mm -hmm. It didn't stop them. And they kept on going and they never looked back. So I have a lot of people trying to derail me at all times. Yes, I do. I still do. And and, I, and I'm not really like, well, you know, like you said, Tim, there's always haters out there. Mm -hmm. There are always somebody trying like the, like the, um, the crab in the barrel syndrome. Mm -hmm. and that's always present no matter what somebody don't like you because you 
went to college. Um, oh, what you going to college for? Why don't you get a check like the rest of us? Yeah, I'm like, uh, uh, that's not for me. You know, well, see, for me, for me, it's like your success is my success. If you go to college and make yourself better, that makes me happy. Yeah. You're someone that I know. I, I, I'm, I'll be proud of you for doing that. Right, you know, but, but there's always that other person right. that's sitting there. Well, hmm, you shouldn't do that because the, the society says that you shouldn't do that. No, you you do what you for you. You don't do mm -hmm. what you know. If that's what you want to do, if you don't let nobody stop you. That's my bottom. That's my point. Don't let nobody stop you. You want to write, direct, sing, mm -hmm. dance, belly dance. I don't care if that's what you want to do. Then go do it. If it makes it, it's for you mm -hmm. to improve you. So what? Whatever floats your boat, go for it. Don't let nobody stop you. Because if you do, then you done derailed your own success. Okay. Done. That's See? good, Michelle. Uh, Martin, you got your mic on? Or you still have problems talking? Y'all can hear me? Oh, I can, I can hear you clearly. Martin. Welcome. Welcome, Martin. Martin. Good evening. First of all, good first evening. Of all, first of all, first of all, welcome, Martin. The topic, the topic we're doing is shortcuts to success. The first question is, find someone you look up with. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I, I didn't really understand how you phrased that. You said, find somebody I look up uh, with, I uh, mean, I look look up to? Yeah, look up to, yes, yes. All right, well, um, that you know, that's very interesting. Um, you know, I, you know, Joe, you know, I talk in, in the language of sports and in movies, but, um, that's good. uh, man, when I, when, when I was thinking about that, um, I, I go through several different directions, but first person I was thinking about is Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. um, and the only reason why is because, and, and, and I know this goes into another question, whatever, but he had to um, overcome some obstacles. Um, I, I, I think the example I was thinking about was when he went into, when um, he didn't want to go to Vietnam and they tried to take away his, bo his boxing license. And, you know, he just stayed the course. And that was interesting because, you know, he didn't quit. He didn't just fall back on anything and say, I can't do it anymore. Eventually, he went back and got his license. And he was able to keep fighting. He never even had to go to war or whatever. But he knew that he, he, he knew what he wanted to do and just kept on doing it. So I thought that was um, admirable. <laughs> you know, and I was just thinking about it. You know, even if they try to take something away from you, you just keep on being yourself. You just keep on doing what you're doing. You know, in basketball, they say um, if you're not making shots right now, just you tell, tell the jump shooter, if you're not making shots, keep shooting. Keep shooting. I think about guys like Kobe Bryant. Um, you know, we hear these remarkable stories how, you know, when the lights was out, whenever, when nobody was on the court. He'll come up, you know, two, three o'clock in the morning and start shooting with the lights off, whatever. And I'm sure it's, you know, it's several other players who probably have done the same thing. But we heard those stories about Kobe, whatever. We've heard that, you know, he'd work harder than everyone else. He'd be in the gym. He he uh, he he'd be in the gym longer. Um, he he did everything he needed to do to, to, to succeed. So I say all that to say, you know, when I look up to somebody, I'm looking up to the person that a, a person that just stays the course. No matter what obstacles come their way, if you just keep on doing what you're doing, you eventually want to get to where you need to. And I yield right there. That's that's good, Mar. Remember one day, um, Shaquille O'Neal one time was coming from after the game because he he won't he won't be league MVP. Um, Phil Jackson asked him to go on come and practice, come and practice. He said come and party. Come. Remember that one? I do. <laughs> you know, that was from the documentary I saw from the Spectrum Sportsnet channel from Los Angeles. I was watching that like, whoa, he he mental him so well that if you want to do a party, you missed your chance to do some coaching, practicing. I I I I'll, I'll just put in a quick disclaimer to Michelle and Tim that uh me and Joe are big Laker fans, so if we go off on a tangent about the Lakers, don't you know it's it's all right. <laughs> Can I ask you if you're Lakers fans or are you LeBron James fans? I am a Lakers fan since 1991. Okay. That's good. That's good. How do you feel about the current team? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, um, 
you know, it just didn't work out, whatever. I, I, I think LeBron's heart was in the right place. I'm happy that he came and they won right away. Mm-hmm. Um, just didn't work out. That's all. I, I, I wish they never got Westbrook. I already seen how he was going he down. Off. He really did. Off. Off. So, I, I, and, and they had the chance to get um the guy that was just in San Antonio. He's in Chicago now. Um, what's that guy's name? Um, uh, um and he, he's act, he was actually born from born in Los Angeles also. Um, no, when, when they could have got Kawhi Leonard at some point. Yeah, it wasn't Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, he could have got Kawhi Leonard, but but this mm-hmm. guy, he he um he he was a part of the San Antonio trade when they traded um when actually yeah when they traded like Kawhi five, Leonard. It was a five trades that happened after he won the record. It right, five trades. The, yeah. But when Kawhi Leonard went to Toronto, they traded the guy from Toronto to San Antonio. I forgot his name, mm-hmm. but anyway, he's in Chicago now, and and I wish LA would have picked him up. But um, they turned him down and went and got Russell Westbrook. But that's another story. That's a yeah, thing. Yeah, that's that's a... <laughs> I, I like LeBron James. He's somebody I, I do admire. LeBron James, the work he's doing with the school and with the kids. Absolutely, yes, and, and that yes, school he opened yes, up. Yes. You know, I, I certainly admire him for doing that because he had some struggles in his life too. You know, coming up, and um, you know, he faces a lot of backlash and stuff of this and that, and and but you know, he continues to keep on keeping on doing his thing. You know, yeah. You know, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get my question. Find someone I look up to. Um, well, I've been look up to myself and God. Look up to God. Also, read the scriptures, of course. And also, I've been doing a lot, of, like a lot, of practicing a lot, of, like do a lot of scriptures and everything I'm doing, and also meditating. I'm doing a lot of meditating ever since that, and also get ready, get get ready for work, and also get some lots of rest. You need some need some rest because you need some need some lots of energy and also the ways I need to do I work with Philly Cam all the time in my life since I don't know what year was that like it was before Michelle came in Philly Cam it was like it was like a long story it was like it was all <laughs> I, I don't remember I came in before Michelle came in that was a long story because Priscilla showed me that building she we she used to work at the old location and. Penn Presbyterian, she saw that location. She was telling me about it. And that's how I met Sophie and the crew that one time, and that was like, wow, mm-hmm. look at that. So, <laughs> and I started taking the TV studio crew that time, then basic field productions, and then producing, directing, mm-hmm. and also I've been taking I'm that doing before COVID. I've been taking crews, TV productions and stuff, mm-hmm. learning a lot of experience, like the Moonstone, the live mm-hmm. cultures. Y'all remember the Moonstones on live culture? Mm-hmm. Yes. And also, oh, yeah. and also Producer's Circle. Gabe Cash mm-hmm. with us. That. Hey, little Gabe, how you doing? You know, so, mm-hmm. man, I don't know. It's Chef Track and lots mm-hmm. of other. How about R&B Showcase? Did you yeah, do R&B yeah. Showcase. <laughs> <laughs> Your show, Tim. <laughs> okay, oh, you got to see. Philly Cam is a great space to, to create. Yeah. It really is. I mean, well, I've been to some of these workshops in, like, New York City. You spend thousands of dollars on these places to go try to learn the same thing you can learn at Philly Cam. Um, they have excellent trainers here at Philly Cam. The, the, the lighting, you know, the lighting, the the sound, the audio workshop, the uh, the TV crew workshop, uh, learning how to use a TriCaster, the green screen, uh, the field yeah. production. It's it's a great place. And then they have a radio station on the top floor. I yeah, mean, it's no. all right in that, in that area. You know, and everybody's so um, willing to work along with each other and train and work together. It's a great place to be. And I never thought I would be there. You know, I, like I said, 2017, I started there. I never thought I'd be there this long. I was going to go take a couple of workshops and say, you know, that's it and just keep, continue. But um, I enjoy being there and I meet, meet great people like yourself. And um, I enjoy creating there. I'm looking forward to getting back in that big studio. Me Do too. Back, <laughs> people, want, people want to get in there. And, you know, like I said, I'm working in, out of different <laughs> studios, by the way. I want to be able to get back in there. Remember, Saturdays is the only time people are coming in the studio. Remember, mm-hmm. now they're doing like twice a week, people are coming in, yeah. like 10 to 2.30 and 2.36. That's a Saturday's the main thing. Right now, it's like Philly can't open a couple of days a week. Right. Mm-hmm. I noticed that. I look, at, I look at my phone. Wow. It used to be every day. Well, hopefully yeah. it will be. I mean, all through COVID, <laughs> we still were able to, there were still opportunities for us to keep our shows going. You yeah. know, we had to do stuff remotely. And yeah. people are now getting into technology more. Like we right are. Now. Yeah. Yeah, I was not really I was not really a big technology person before I started working there, but I really this yeah, got yeah. me more. 
I didn't even believe it. I didn't even know a cell, cell phone. You know, I had to go out this guy to get one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I never had a cell phone. You know, I had to learn how to use this thing. We had it for about two years, maybe, you know. And I actually got this during the pandemic because I was forced into doing it. So I said, Yeah, I know. You were doing it. Um, I was strictly, you know, call me on the and house large. on the old school house phone, you know. Yeah, landline. Yeah, I was like, the only big landline. Leave me a message. I'll get back to you. It might not be today, but maybe a couple of days and I'll call you back. You know, I still got mine because uh, I, yeah. I, 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 I'm not too thrilled about technology either mm -hmm. because it cuts out and um, like I'm missing more messages with mm -hmm. the cell phone than I did with my yeah. landline. Yeah. So they're like, why you got two different things? I said, because when one fell, I got a backup. Mm -hmm. And landlines, yeah. I know they got bad press and all that kind of stuff. Oh, they're outdated. <laughs> yeah, but in a pinch. It works. But they it work, works. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can talk longer on it. Like, <laughs> without the phone saying, oh, I got to charge my phone. Now, mm -hmm. on my good old-fashioned landline, mm -hmm. we could talk for hours without a problem. Mm -hmm. oh, I know. <laughs> and then the thing that excites me to get it, because I know I can do cheap video on this phone, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's cute. That's fun. And you know? it's wonderful because I've, I've known that people edit, have on, made phone phone. movies from a cell phone, you yes. know? Documentaries are made. A lot of documentaries are made yeah. from cell phones. You know? And I, I, I think that's, in a way, kind of piqued my curiosity mm -hmm. on how to do it, you know? I still don't know how, but I'll figure it out. You know, the curiosity is there. Um, I'm not too crazy about the technology because you're talking about 4G and 5G. Mm -hmm. I don't know what a G is, you know, mm -hmm. you know, old school gangster, oh, maybe. Worry, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just something else to get you to spend more money. That's all. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. And then um, it depends on your phone. If it's a cheapy, cheapy phone. So you're not going to get all the, the, the bells and whistles and like, I don't understand why people are like standing in line for a five hundred dollar phone, and I'm like, that's something that might not even last you a year. And I'm like, isn't like five hundred dollars like kind of like a check? Like, <laughs> would you rather spend five five hundred dollars on the phone or five hundred dollars on the sneakers? I don't want to do it either. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, think about uh, that. Uh, no, I mean the young no. the kids, the kids they spend that much on phone, eight hundred dollars on this, uh, yeah, five hundred dollars exactly. on sneakers. You know, sneakers. Like, yeah. Look, I'm still, I'm still in the pay less era. Okay, yeah, me too. I, I, Seventy five dollars, a hundred, maybe a hundred. That's it. Uh, it's that. That. No. <laughs> Excuse me for being frugal, but <laughs> mm -mm. I, I got bills, honey. Uh, yes, right. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it is what it is. The funny thing about it is, and I guess it's just me uh, speaking at an old age now, I find myself spending a lot more money on education, something that, um, you know, not, not necessarily a degree program. I, okay. I, I, you know, I've been through that, but um, just like a course, whatever, you mm -hmm. know, I, I'll end up spending a lot of money on that. And I say, wow, you know, because that, that that's what's going to drive you further. That's going to take you further when you're spending money learning how to do something like right, right now. Um, you know, um, artificial intelligence is just taking off like crazy. If you spend some time getting educated about that, that's where, that's where, um, just my opinion, you know, a lot of jobs is going to start opening up in the future of people who can work with artificial intelligence. So, mm -hmm. that, 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 so, so you spend money on that, you know, that's going to bring the fruits later on, whatever you, you spend them $200 or some sneakers. Well, you mm -hmm. know, if somebody step on it by mistake. <laughs> a week later, <laughs> then that sneaker is devalued anyway. So, yeah. I don't you know. know. I, I, I just can't. Thank you for joining us today. Our shortcut to success topic. Join us on the second part on our shortcut to success series in connecting during crisis.